Alive from my news up here at Adesawe in Kanda. This is News 360. My name is Alfred Okansi. And I am Aisha Yakubu. A look at the headlines this evening. News 360 headlines is brought to you by Deluxe Paint. Heaven Insecticide Spray and Coil. Piccadilly Biscuits. And My Life Insurance. Chief Executive of Obengfu Hospital, Dr. Andor Bing, accuses Medical and Dental Council of masterminding his arrest and subsequent prosecution. And a National Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values dares political parties to state their position on LGBT in the 2020 manifesto. Elsewhere in the world, U.S. Treasury sanctions three brothers of controversial Gupta family for operating co uh, corruption network in South Africa. We have the details of these and many more stories, including sports and entertainment, coming up in the next 60 minutes. Remember, we're also live on DSTV Channel 279. As on to our first story this evening, and the National Coalition for Proper Human Sexual Rights and Family Values has dared political parties in this country to state their position on LGBT in their 2020 manifesto to enable the electorate make informed choices in the next year's general elections. At a media briefing here in Accra, the coalition again urged Ghanaians to vote against any political party which fails to make clear its policy on the issue. Joseph Armstrong has more. According to the coalition, the posture of some government appointees on the issue is a cause to worry. We are saying that politicians must stand and include it in their manifesto. If somebody does not include it, and if we realize that any one of them is propagating that, or has it subtly inside the manifesto, or even behind, we will advise people not to vote for such a person. For his part, a member of the group, Dr. Samuel Owuna wants the president to go beyond just talking and order the destruction of CSE documents already circulating in parts of the country. The CSE manual is there. We want it destroyed publicly to give us assurance that it's gone. And then, and then you have the uh, class 4 to classes uh, language curricula that we also showed. It's also been produced and it came out of the press uh, just September 2019. That document is there. Let them bring it out and burn them publicly. We don't need them. Executive Secretary and Spokesperson for the Coalition, Moses Fuamweni, expressed concern about the posture of some media personalities. I'm inviting Kweku to come and listen and learn because, you see, he himself confessed that he doesn't know too much about these matters. He's just studying and he's just learning. And if he studies and learns, then he will know. Indeed, I'm going to give to him a book, Strained Relationship, uh, on the strategies of the LGBT. I'm going to present it to him today so that he can begin to read. When he informs himself, he will know that CSE just didn't begin. And that IPPF, we've got documents on IPPF website. We didn't, uh, you know, bring it out. IPPF document has got a seven-fold platform for CSE, and it includes celebrating diversity. The coalition later outlined their resolution. Meanwhile, the Professor Mills Foundation has also joined the coalition to fight against legitimizing the right of LGBTQIs. President Mills spoke frontally to this matter in his time. Why has it resurfaced? It's because it has not become a national policy. So President Mills spoke, President Kufado has spoken, tomorrow another president will speak. We say, look, the job of the president of Ghana is so heavy and much weightier than discussing this, these kinds of things. So let's build it as a policy, a Ghanaian policy. No president will be forced to make you know, varying comments on it. Ghanaians say no, they say no. Let's allow our presidents to do bigger things. The National Accreditation Board has called on the authorities of the various tertiary institutions across Ghana to protect students, especially the females, by instituting appropriate systems and structures, as well as strengthening and fully implementing their sexual harassment policies. 
Now, in a statement signed and issued by the Acting Executive Secretary, Dr. Kingsley Nyako, in reaction to the BBC's Sex for Grades documentary, noted that students who have been preyed upon by lecturers must muster courage to report them. Now, according to NAB, um, it is looking forward. According to NAB, it was appalled by the potential damage the investigative piece by the BBC could have on their reputation of the University of Ghana, adding that the board will not countenance any inappropriate behavior which has the tendency to compromise teaching and learning, which ultimately could affect the quality and standard of tertiary education in Ghana. In the documentary produced by the BBC Africa Eye titled Sex for Grades and aired on Monday, October 7, two lecturers at the University of Ghana, Professor Ransford Jampo and Dr. Paul Kwame Butako, were indicted for sexual harassment and have since been interdicted by the university. Uh, the chairman for the Koforidia Technical University branch of uh, Tutag, Dr. Anthony Ejakwa, says the association expects government to do the needful after engagement and discussions with its members to strike by the association has entered day four with students feeling the impact by the Technical University Teachers Association of Ghana is to press home their demands for improved conditions of service. When the news team visited the Kofoudia Technical University on Thursday, lecture halls were locked. A few students were loitering, hoping academic work would resume. It has affected us because as a first-year student in lectures has gone on strike, it should be affected us. We really find difficult um, because we don't actually know um, um, what we want to be about to own study. The branch TUTAC chairman, Dr. Anthony Ejakwa, said they only need government to do what is needful after engagement and discussions. It appears as if we have been lenient. It's been, it's been like we've been very patient for three years. And if we are going to discuss this, let's discuss it completely thoroughly so we don't come back again to the same thing again. It's the best thing. And it's in the interest of government also to resolve this completely so that we don't have to come back and forth on this particular issue again. A meeting has been scheduled with the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission and other stakeholders. Four teacher unions have called on Parliament to suspend the passage of the pre tertiary Education and Education Regulatory Bills 2019 or face their wrath. The unions at a news conference in Accra faulted the Education Ministry for not consulting them before the bills were presented to Parliament. According to the group, the pre tertiary Education Bill, Education Regulatory Bill, and the Complementary Education Bill 2019 did not have their input. The four teacher unions want Parliament to suspend any discussion leading to the passage of the bill. General Secretary of NAT, Philip Larson, said any delay to suspend its passage could affect the industrial harmony. By this press conference, notifying Parliament and humbly requesting for the suspension of the three bills, asking that copies of the bills be made available to us for our study, analysis, and required inputs to make it holistic before deliberations on the bills would commence. We fear that failure to suspend the bills will disturb the industrial peace we are all enjoying. President of UNAGRAT Eric Angel Kabonu explained that the sector ministry failed to respond to their numerous letters to seek their input. The document that is before Parliament did not enjoy engagement with the teacher unions, those that the document is going to affect. So we are calling on Parliament, and you ask what, whether we have timelines for Parliament. It's an immediate demand that they should suspend the bill, send the bill back to where it came from for those people to have engagement with stakeholders. President of the Coalition of Concerned Teachers, Kinali Awudu, said the unions expect to be engaged to make their inputs. There are three major bills before Parliament to be passed into law, of which we have not been heard, and we will not agree for its passage until we have been heard. Other than that, we cannot hold 
the wrath of our members any longer. Chairman of Teo Peter K. Lumo argued that the bill would not be complete without their input. The ministry did was to give copies to all stakeholders in the investors to make, how do you call it, comments to the Ministry of how do you call it, Education. It's not, we didn't go to Parliament to do that. The ministry gave all the unions, UTAG, Teu, Gawa, FUSAG, name them, copies to make comments. And I think this is what we are asking for. Give us copies. Let's make comments. Let's discuss before it is stable in Parliament. Now, the Chief Executive Officer of the Advanced Body Sculpt Center, popularly known as the Obenfo Hospital, Dr. Ando Obeng, has accused the Medical and Dental Council of uh, what he terms masterminding his arrest and subsequent prosecution. The medical practitioner who was actually standing trial on charges of practicing medicine without a license and operating an licensed medical facility has been set free by an Accra High Court. He was acquitted and discharged after the court presided over by uh, Emmanuel Asando upheld a court submission of no case on court filed by lawyers for the accused. In his ruling, Mr. Asando held that the prosecution failed to prove its case beyond reasonable doubt by presenting insufficient evidence and witnesses whose testimonies were riddled with inconsistencies. Now, Dr. Bengando was previously discharged on January 23, 2019, if you recall, by a circuit court presided over by uh, Priscilla Dapa Miracle on the basis of want of prosecution. Now, in July 2015, investigations by the Medical and Dental Council revealed that Dr. Bengando had failed to renew his annual registration to practice since 2013. He was arrested after the matter was reported to the police. Let's stay on this a bit further. I'm joined in the studio by Dr. Dominic Obengando himself, the Chief Executive Officer of the Advanced Body Sculpt Center, known as Obin Force. It's good to have you. Good evening to you. But let me start off with this. Are you a licensed medical practitioner, at least per the Medical and Dental Council's requirements? Of course I am. And I've been registered with the Medical and Dental Council since the year 2000. Since 2000? Exactly. But according to them, they say since 2013, you hadn't renewed your licenses. As a matter of fact, that's why they even you know, began this whole process in the first place. So why didn't they prove all that in court? They couldn't prove that they in court? They couldn't prove, prove that in court. Um, you know, they, they started this whole thing. Um, in fact, the, the Registrar of the Medical and Dental Council, Dr. Eli Kwesi Atupui, actually started all this, you know, started making noise about this uh, since, since the year 2000. And he was all over every, uh, you know, every station. Every but you said you registered in 2000, and, and yet so they didn't have records of your registration in their books? Did they say that? I mean, you, you're say, I mean, they, they are saying... Yes, as, if, as if, 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 if they didn't, then you should have proved... I mean, they should have shown all that in court. What, I mean, we, we, were, we were in the circuit court, okay? And I understand that as a competent, um, you know, they have, uh, you know, all the competency to, to actually, um, you know, preside over it, over this whole case. So they took it court. And remember, they, they, it was a criminal case they were, they were there with. And we're supposed to prove. Uh, let me just state that that's, we're, we're going to get reactions from the Medical and Dental Council uh, shortly as we, we're joined by Dr. Tupi himself on the telephone. But when last did you renew your registration with the Medical and Dental Council? In December. December in December when? 2018. December. Every doctor is supposed to renew that. Um, on an year. annual basis. Exactly. I see. Can you show proof of this registration? Here. Yeah. I mean, like, do you have it? I have proof of it. And I have proof of it. And if the case continued in court, we'll show all that. Um, the, the Medical and Dental Council was supposed to prove that um, serious allegation that they, they, they peddled or he peddled all over the place. They can't deceive the public um, with that kind of uh, you know, thing. I see. But, but part of the other reasons why you know, this case was of real public concern is that some of your patients actually came out to say that due to the unsuccessful surgeries that you performed on them, they were left with lifelong injuries and deformities. Oh, okay. So you, you have the list of them? But that's what the dental medical dental council oh, actually put um, up. Alfred, can we, can we be so 
can we, human beings, be so callous with allegations? I mean, the, the, uh, the, the Register of the Medical and Dental Council since 13, 2013 has been peddling that. I have requested for such names, and I've never gotten that. In any case, if you had that, why didn't you put that, that, put that before the Circuit High Court? Let me go on to the telephone now. Dr. Eli Kwesi Atikpui is a registrar of the Medical and Dental Council. He joins me on the telephone for more of this. Doc, thank you. Good evening to you. Now, you, you went to court. You are confident that you had a case uh, against Dr. Ando. Now, the court is saying that you have no case. As a matter of fact, your, your, the people that you brought as witnesses gave inconsistent uh, testimonies. What's your reaction to this? Hello? Hello? Dr. Atiku, um, uh, yes. I'd want to plead with you if you can re now move away from your TV set. I see you're listening I'll to me. Uh, let me do that, please. Good. Let me do that. You're, you're listening me to me on, on the television. Now, I want you to listen to me through the phone uh, so you can respond promptly. Yeah, uh, is there any feedback? Great. I hope you heard my question, so if you could answer it for me, please. Hello? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. Uh, I, I, I hope you heard my question, so you can, if you can answer it for me, please. Yeah, your question, that, uh, can you please repeat your question? I'm asking so that, that you went to court. Answer. You were confident you had a case. The court says there was no case because some of your witnesses were even giving inconsistent testimonies. How do you react to this? Well, that is the position of the court, and uh, for now, I would have nothing to say about that until we've received the full details of whatever the proceedings were. I'm unable to comment on that. But I mean, you were in court, weren't you? You you sat through the whole process uh, as well, a panther. I, as an individual, was not in court. I mean, I'm talking about the medical and dental council. Yes. The medical and dental council was in court, and I'm not sure, and I'm not sure as to whether at any time they had requested for evidence and then our witnesses were inconsistent as it's been alleged. Well, but this is what the court is saying, that indeed, because per the ruling, you failed, now they had actually failed to corroborate the case with ample evidence and proving beyond reasonable doubt, as a matter of fact, you, the prosecution, you failed to convince the court about the veracity of your case. Yeah, that is what I'm saying, that that is what the court is saying now. So we are going to request for details of the ruling or the judgment, then we can make our position clear as to whether what the court is saying is really what the situation is. So we would receive the documents and then we'll study and look at the way forward. I see, but the per court your, per is saying that, excuse me, the right. court is saying that, yes, we were unable to prove our case. That is the position of the court. Now, let us receive the document, let us study what went through, and then we can make our position clear. I think that's fair, but are you going to appeal this particular ruling? Well, for now, I'm unable to make any comment because I indicated earlier that I serve on the board and decisions are taken by the board of the Medical and Dental Council. Dr. Tikri alone does not make up the board of the Medical and Dental Council. So that decision will be taken by the board of the Medical and Dental Council. The man, uh, Dr. Andor, is in the studio and he, he, he still maintains that he's in good standing per your registration and requirements. Is that the case in your books and registration that you Unfortunately, have? Unfortunately, that is not the case. He's not in good standing. Dr. Obin Ando is not in good standing with the Medical and Dental Council. When was the last time you received registration fees from him? <laughs> you see, paying registration fee does not uh, require, uh, requ uh, you know, you're being in good standing. It's not an issue of paying, uh, you know, a stipulated amount. That is not the position. That is not how a practitioner gets onto the register and remains in good standing. There are certain things that needed to be done. There are certain requirements that a practitioner needs to meet before that practitioner. Uh, so what are those requirements? With the 
Medical and Dental Council. What are those requirements, Dr. Tukwe? I mean, the, well, some of them are that, well, you need to pay your renewal fee within a stipulated time. You need to have accrued a certain number of CPD points, and you need to have paid your retention the year before. Failure to do so, you may have to complete a restoration form. And there are requirements for those restoration forms. Things that needed to be attached to the restoration form before your name is restored onto the register. I see. So how much is this registration fee or the, uh, the, yeah. the renewable fee you are talking about? Uh, the, re the, the retention fee is 400 per annum. 400 CDs per annum? Yeah. 400 CDs. Yes. And and, and let me let me just ask this: ask Did you have records of Doctor Ando paying, paying this money? I do not have those records. I see. So you how see, are you see, paying the money? I think you see. I think I think I think you see. Um, we cannot deceive the public this no, way. I, I, I asked a direct question. You so see, how are you paying the money? Because they don't have records of. He doesn't have it. Yes. Um, Wendy was in my office today. If he comes, I will show him. Ah, okay. I can, I can, yeah, I can, I can show no, you now. So, no, no, wait, wait, please. please so, please, I'll, I'll just ask yes. you. Yes, I will show you payments of it, um, uh, my, my, so, my brother. So he cannot continue deceiving the public uh, this way. It's so, it's so, I mean, it's, it, it's sickening. It's sickening. Assuming it is 400 Ghana cities and Dr. Biando okay. hasn't been able to pay, will you take him to... To the circuit high court to be jailed for 20 years because he's not been able to pay for one, one, one other issue of public interest was your training and where you had this training what 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 no let, what, 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 what was in fact where did you even have your training let's let's establish this first of all okay i don't want us to to deviate because it's serious. Yeah, Do you understand? You see, look, 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 please. You see, look, no. please, it's serious. Here is a circuit court. Now, no. wait, wait a minute. That no, I think I, I, I agree. No, 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 please, really please, 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 please. You see, please, 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 please. The court has acquitted me and discharged me because these people, okay, the Medical and Dental Council could not prove that case. You should, you should get it. Prove that, the, the, the case against you. Fantastic. You, you, the, he, couldn't, he, couldn't, he couldn't prove okay. it. Now, remember, remember that the Medical no. and Dental Council I, is an authority. Absolutely. And, and they could I, not I, come to court to prove that case that I, am, I feel to, to, do, to do that, that renewal. And, and, and you know, one of the things that's going to be good to especially the general public, in yes. terms of the fact that after this court ruling, yes. a number of other issues that the public needs to know. So that's why I'm asking you that direct question about your training. Where did you receive this training? I know you attended the KNUSD, but is, is that where you had the medical training from? Fantastic. I, I, got, I got the medical uh, training from the School of Medical Sciences. Where? And, 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 and in court, Science please, Technology. Yes. And for, for public no, let, let's please. establish this. No, no, the KNUSD. You see, it's, it, it's important. The police took all certificates that they had in their possession okay. to, to well, the points of training for verification. All this was, um, the media should have been in court. The media should get the court ruling. So you it have is the so elaborate, the fantastic, you know, very, very elaborate. Okay? Um, and, and, and... I see. So now, just to establish the fact, you had the training from the KNUSD. Fantastic. Okay. I see. Uh, Dr. Eloquy, um, You've been listening to Dr. Ando now. I, I don't know you, if you corroborate all the things he said and if as a medical and dental council, you have the records as he has the, put out. You know, the, the, okay. Hello. Hello, Dr. Elipi, can you hear me? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, unfortunately, I was put off, uh, I was put off. I'm sorry. For a I'm period of time, so I'm, I'm really I'm, unable to really it, it, comprehend it, it, what exactly what's said. I'm sorry. It wasn't deliberate. I'm sorry about that. But the point is that one other issue of public interest was the training uh, that Dr. Ando had and where he had the training. And he says, he's just told me that he had training from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, uh, the School of Medi Medicine there. Are you able to confirm this as a council? We do not have any doubt that... 
Dr. Obin Ando did not attend a medical school. It is on record that Dr. Obin Ando attended the KNUST School of Medical Sciences and completed in 1997. It is on record. His file is in the office of the Medical and Dental Council. No one had contested Dr. Obin Ando's qualification as a medical practitioner from the KNUST SMS. I see. So, because for the sake of fairness, you're going to re review the the ruling. I'm going to leave you there with this, and uh, and then come back to the studio and get a quick finally from. See, so I I, I I hate lies. With what, please. You know, what, 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 I, I wait, wait. You ask him, please. I, I'm please. sure you have, you want to make a point. Please, you you, you, if you, you disagree, ask him, please. You see, yeah, it will not be fair to want to you know describe it as that. So, what exactly is your yes. position? Yes, you asked him whether or not I had paid my renewal fees this year. What did he say? You said you haven't. Did I you haven't. Have records? Okay, yeah. So what I'm seeing is a cash deposit. Yes. Uh, of how much? Uh, uh, Echo Bank, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, um, to the that's a payment of retention fees signed by Dr. Ake Atikwe himself. And that. All right. So um, I want to thank you. Um, as much, I, I need to apologize. We are unable to go on. But let me just say that I mean most of the very important issues is what we're teasing out right here and the aftermath of this particular court ruling. But you're still live here on News 360 on MTN Video Report tonight. Our citizen journalist Kofi Santiago reports on the deplorable road at uh, Enquanta South in Old that's OT region. This part of the road you are seeing right now is almost in the middle of the town, Enquanta. Every year, a car will fall over here, and nothing will be done about it. And this year is worse. As I'm telling you, we have counted about five cars for the past two weeks. One trailer carrying with wood falling on another, coming from Pasa. The cars traveling from north, Pasa to Nkwanta or Accra, cannot cross. I wonder what would have happened if this part of the road was far away from town. Nobody will even be here to assist these drivers. People pay tax and we are not seeing the benefits. This is the plight of another car lying down, carrying Kokote from the north to Accra. My name is Tabina Kofi Santiago, reporting from Nkwanta South. You can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 055 that's 055 Stay with us. There's a lot coming up after this. Do stay. You're watching News 360. Good evening and thanks for staying with us. Let's do some business news now with me, Nana Ikria Mensa Abrampa. Now, the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union is urging the trade ministry to source for different investors for the Ayinsu starch and Commenda sugar factories. Now, General Secretary of the ICU, Solomon Kote, who spoke to our labor correspondent, Daniel Opoku in Accra, noted the factories in their current state have resulted in unemployment for the youth in the area. The Ayensu starch factory is yet to bounce back after a takeover by another investor due to inadequate financial injection. Workers have been laid off while equipment have been left to rot. According to the ICU, the investor is expecting a stimulus package. We don't know what really went into it before just one group of companies actually had it. Whether they also went into bid or they were handpicked to say come and take over and run. In whichever case, they might have expressed interest. If at the time of expressing the interest, they didn't know about the gravity of the issues. Okay. And probably they're also looking for stimulus package to come from government which is not forthcoming or which has come and they are not meeting conditions. We actually don't know. Worst of it, we would prefer that a Ghanaian home takes it over. Another concern to the ICU is the Commander Sugar Factory, where operations have stalled. Despite workers receiving appointment letters, work at the factory is yet to recommence. We believe this Commander Factory, the vision that Kwame Nkrumah had, should not be allowed to die because all great jobs that were established in this country 
we could count as many as 30,000 gone. And we can all sit down also to look this one that had been revived. This was in Kuman days, but now this has been revived. We think life must be given to it, and Ghanaians must be proud to say this is our own and this is where we work. The union again praised the trade minister, Alan Chamartin, for engaging stakeholders to deal with piracy in the textiles industry, but urged the ministry to consider financial support to the produce buying company PBC to operate efficiently. A lot of uh, consideration has been put together, including consortiums of banks that you know they owe, and some good arrangements have been made. So it is our prayer that the way the cocoa industry have also been revamped, and we are expecting to hit the one million yield, PBC will do as the honest buy discharging their duties duty -free. Now, the Pernod Ricard company has introduced the Segam Imperial Blue Whiskey onto the Ghanaian market. The initiative is intended to deliver value at an affordable price to consumers. Segam's Imperial Blue is a blend of green spirit and imported scotch malt. The premium packaging of the drink comes in hues of blue, breaking away from traditional color code, making it contemporary and youthful. Each bottle comes with temper evident closures for product safety. According to the producers, its exceptional smoothness is appreciated worldwide. We believe that it's time to bring this very superior quality whiskey for the Ghanaian market. The main reason is that we believe that there is a need for a super premium whiskey like Imperial Blue, which is made out of grain only, okay, grain and single and the malt whiskey, and we decide, that's why we decided to launch it into uh, into the Ghanaian market. Ghana and West Africa managing director of the company, Grigri Lemari, stressed the company is poised to give customers quality and affordable products. We believe that the Ghanaian consumers do know their whiskies. So we hope that the Ghanaian consumers will know, will be able to tell the difference and to recognize the superior quality of Imperial Blue. Each whiskey has its own characteristic, its own taste. We believe that what makes Imperial Blue special, it is unique smoothness. This unique smoothness is the key selling uh, argument for Imperial Blue and for people to enjoy Imperial Blue, responsibly of course. The drink will be available in 750, 375 and 180 millimeters. We have more news on 3news.com. My name is Nana Ikuya Mensa Brampa. Aisha is standing by with more. Thank you, Nanikia. Now, the European Union has handed over drones to the Environmental Protection Agency. The presentation forms part of the EU's accountability, rule of law and anti-corruption program to support partner countries combat climate change. The equipment, the second support, will be used by the EPA to upscale the compliance monitoring of the activities of small-scale mining companies in Ghana's forest. It will also aid the EPA scale-up monitoring of system to other areas of environmental compliance, such as noise pollution, oil and gas, and industry. What is now motivating us to step this up is the urgency that has been acquired by the climate change issue uh, in the world in this moment. Uh, I think that after the Paris Agreement in 2015, there has been a big momentum internationally to um, fix ambitious goals to fight against climate change. And Ghana is one of the countries that have taken this kind of commitment in Paris. Ambassador Akonsia said although Ghana's climate change challenges are self-inflicted, the EU is pleased with government's efforts. The Minister for Environment, Professor Kwame Frimpong-Bwaten, lauded the support. The dry seasons are becoming more prolonged and intense. Most of the rivers and lakes dry up in the northern part of our country. The result is that farmers have no access to water for the EU to come in the framework of the Arab program to provide EPA with more drones is something that is commendable. Especially at a time when the EPA, even with the scanty resources, is trying to engage some more people specifically for monitoring in the mining areas. The Environmental Protection Agency in 2018 began upscaling of pilot testing of information technology compliance monitoring tools in Takwa, Obwase and Koforidia. 
Now, Chelium Foundation has handed over a kindergarten and six-unit classroom block to Jabuko DA Basic School in the Volta region. Now, the project forms part of the company's corporate social responsibility and the its Verna Changing Lives initiative. In the garden block is fully finished and has been stocked with teaching and learning materials. Close to 70 pupils who used to attend classes in a deplorable wooden structure are now relieved. Now uh, we are moving into education. Now because we have discovered that the education system in our country, Ghana, has to be developed and has to be well uh, constructed uh, in terms of uh, structures and facility. Managing director of Trillium Company, Ali Ajami, said the foundation believes in quality education. We all feel proud because seeing those children happy and they are going to get better education, this is our goal. The foundation, the social support wing of Trillium Industrial Company Ghana, Producers of Rush Energy Drink and Vena Distilled Water undertakes projects which directly impact the lives of the disadvantaged. Also, pharmaceutical company NS Chemist has presented a check of 10,000 CDs to the breast cancer unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital to support the surgery of patients. Staff of the company joined contestants of TV3 Ghana's Most Beautiful to create awareness on the disease. Cancer tops cancer-related diseases in Ghana. Out of 4,500 new cases diagnosed every year, about 2,000 patients and 4,500 new cases diagnosed annually lose their lives. While the survival rate when diagnosed early is high, about 60% of patients report to the hospital at the advanced stages of the disease. Former head of the surgery department of Kolebu, Professor Gleg Lamte said the donation would enable the hospital carry out its sensitization and treatment. You often have to go around to speak to people about breast cancer. We have to organize screening for people. Um, and then sometimes the patients too don't come because they don't have funds. They don't even have funds to take a biopsy to make the diagnosis or take an x-ray and so on. So in spite of the fact that the health insurance covers breast cancer, they still have some costs that so prevents some people from coming and so it helps in supporting patient care. Brand communications manager of NS Chemist, Sharon Enim, expressed the hope that the funds would be used for its intended purpose. Aside this gesture that we are doing, which is a seasonal gesture to support breast cancer awareness in the month of October, we also offer free medical screening, which is um, blood pressure and BMI checks in all our retail shops, which is our pharmacies across the country. And we are doing this to also continue to support to improve healthcare delivery in Ghana. So NS Chemist is generally committed to this and committed to providing quality and affordable medicines in Ghana. Contestants of Ghana's Most Beautiful were screened. It's alive here on News 360. There's more news after this. Stay with us. Time for the sport here on News 360. My name is Theo Inyan. Let's get down to business. Now, aspiring Ghana Football Association president Fred Papo has launched his manifesto in Accra, revealing 10 main ideas as his foundation for revamping the local game. The former GFA vice president was passed to contest for uh, the 25th October election by the vetting committee of the Normalization Committee last week and has made uh, his vision clear to Ghanaians and delegates. Fred Papo touched on key areas like refereeing, women's football, national team and a strong local league that govern our football in the country and expatiated on his uh, ways of improving them. Now Papo reveals his plans for Ghana football. What they want me to do are the things I put up there. They have issues relating to facing transport uh, for their players. They have issues relating to paying salaries. They have issues relating to getting the equipment. They have issues relating to general resource shortage, you know, where they have to suffer and then use their own private and corporate means to finance football. And for most of them, it's led to their collapse, collapse of families, collapse of businesses and the rest. So if they see somebody who is honestly and transparently addressing these issues, definitely that's what they want. 
Okay, so let's now touch on those uh, 10 key points that I mentioned earlier. Now, Fred Papu says that he's going to be focusing on officiating. Of course, it was one of the biggest issues when Anasis Expose rocked Ghana football. FA and community interface. National teams, special initiatives, allied technical sports staff, as well as governance, resource mobilization, juvenile football, domestic football, and coaching. We definitely will be touching on all of these uh, key points subsequently before the election, so keep an eye on that. To some heart-wrenching news, and Ghana striker Rafael Gemina has been ruled out of football indefinitely due to an unknown heart condition. The 24-year-old striker had been told by his club doctors to stop playing the game following the unspecified heart problem discovered while he underwent health test on Wednesday. Reports indicates that Dramina will undergo further tests to ascertain what the problem really is and what it holds for him. This is terrible news as Dramina had been described um, as one of uh, Ghana's most promising forwards with his goals at Red Star Belgrade and other clubs he had spent some time with in the last few seasons. Oh, so we just wait to see what exactly really happens of that. I wish him speedy recovery and also hope that he gets back onto the pitch, um, you know, defying all the odds. But let's go straight to some games because the games really have been going on in the absence of club football. The international games are ongoing. Don't expect Ghana in here. <laughs> now, Netherlands also drew 0-0 with Northern Ireland. There's Croatia beating Hungary. Three goals to zero. Slovakia also losing to Wales. And then uh, Austria playing 1 1 with Israel. Now there was um, Macedonia also beating Slovenia by a goal to uh, zero. Kazakhstan losing to Cyprus. Belgium thrashing San Marino by six goals to zero. That game is ongoing, as well as Russia's against Scotland, which has produced no goals yet. Now these are all in the Euro 2020 qualifiers but I need to let you know what exactly is happening on the international stage in terms of the friendlies as well. And Brazil they drew 1-1 with Senegal, Sadio Mane instrumental in this particular one. Thailand also uh, drawing 1-1 with uh, Congo. There's Togo losing to Kivet. Gabon beating Burkina Faso by a goal to nail. Kosovo beating Gibraltar by a goal to nail. Serbia are not the Serbia they are of old are they? Um, drawing 0-0 with Paraguay. Algeria against DR Congo or Jerry, remember they are the African champions, and then Bolivia, we are playing against Venezuela. It's all mixed up because it's all the international friendlies, and we'll be bringing you the results later of all of these games. My name is Thierry Vignan. Thanks for keeping up with sports with me right here on News 360. I'll see you some other time. Well, so veteran actor Richard Moffat Damijo is regarded as Nollywood's hottest grandpa, not only for his handsome looks, but for his acting prowess as well. It remains a dream of many filmmakers to work with RMD, as is popularly known, but the Nollywood icon has told Ozuari that he is picky about the movie roles that he, he picks up. What will uh, make RMD turn down a movie role? Let's take a look at this. Didn't you sleep with her, Taya? Tell me, didn't you sleep with her? What did I ever do to you, Kemi? Tell me. So I can apologize to you. I can make a make. I, I can make this work. Well, ever since he kicked off his acting career in the 1990 Nollywood actor RMD has always been the fans' favorite, regarded as one of the backbones of the booming industry. Richard Moffat Damejo has inspired a lot of fans through his acting skills. Many are awed by RMD's charisma and staying power. The actor, politician and former commissioner for culture and tourism in Delta State has revealed doing his work with passion has been the secret ingredient for his career success. Across Africa and also in Nigeria, you are regarded as one of the backbones of the industry. We want to find out your success story your rise to the top what is the secret uh, how do you make it's god's grace god's grace and dedication to work i i love my work and i and i'm dedicated to my work um, i never joke with my work I, I think it's a privilege to to be in this kind of work and so i i don't i don't take it for granted not for one day opening up on what will make him turn down a movie role the nollywood icon and fashionista noted he frowns on rules that debase humanity is there any role that you will not take any role as an actor that you turn down what would be that role a role that doesn't have any kind of redemption uh, I, I will not take a role that will debase 
humanity to the point where there is no redemption. There must be a redemption. There must be a redemptive value to the characters that I play. Did you turn down any role before? Oh, I turned down a lot of roles. Uh, because they didn't have redemptive value. I don't think man can be totally bad or humanity can be totally bad. There has to always be some hope at the end of it all. You know, so if a guy is bad, there has to be somebody else who is good or he has to have a chance at redemption. Richard Mofeda Mejo is currently on location in Ghana as a cast in Shelley Frimpong Manson yet to be released movie, The Perfect Picture, 10 years later. Staying in that car and, and seeing me. It's a great guy. He is. Likes he is. of him and Kanayo. Oh, mm -hmm, Kanayo. Mm -hmm. You remember him? I remember him, Peter Ducci and. Uh, many of those Nigerian actors. You, you once acted in a movie? Right? No, no. You have, actually. No. You are in a couple of, you know, Shirley from Paul Hey, that's Congratulations. Yeah, you don't are. Don't do this to me. No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, but I want to say thank you so much. <laughs> My name is Alfred Okansi, and it's always great to have you as company. And I am Aisha Yakubu. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. Good evening.